Hi, this is Jenny. I wanted to show you how to make some really pretty glittery backgrounds with um, adhesive-backed paper and stencils and just pouring the glitter over it. Here I have some adhesive-backed paper that I've cut down and I'm just taking the um, non-stick part off of part of the paper and fitting the stencil on top of it. The stencil will peel right off when we're through, so there's not a problem with that. I was just looking to make sure I had it centered. Now the paper's bigger than my stencil because I was making a larger card, but if you're making a smaller card, you could do this in one swoop. I'm taking a part of that slip release paper and rubbing it over the stencil to make sure the stencil has adhered down, and that way with that paper I um, wasn't getting touching the adhesive. I'm putting this green stickles, um, I believe it's eucalyptus, I'll have to put it in the description, and um, glitter all over and then you just use your finger to um, make sure you've got an even coating and to burnish that glitter in the areas where the um, stencils openings are. So you just rub it on there and kind of rub it lightly and then you'll take off your extra glitter. I've got a magazine underneath the glitter or sales ad and underneath my project so that when I'm done I will just um, pile all the glitter in that and then put the extra back into my container. Of course you kind of get it on your hands but hey. And I'm just shaking off the excess and I'll carefully remove the stencil in a minute. I do go ahead and try to get all the glitter off the top of the stencil before I remove it so that when I remove it I'm not getting extra glitter where I don't want it. I even take a paintbrush and try to remove that glitter off the stencil. And here you can see when I begin to take the stencil off that you have glitter in the areas that were exposed and I have a little bit where it got underneath the stencil there but I'll cover it up later and you won't even notice that. So I will clean up this part of the glitter. Like I said it's in a um, sales catalog so I can just scoop it all up. And I'm cleaning up this part before I add glitter to the other parts of the um, card adhesive sheet so that I don't get green where I don't want it to be. So I'm just going to place my container down and get all that in. A little bit has stuck to the side so I'm using a paintbrush to get that off. Of course you can tell there's lots of glitter everywhere but it's okay. I found that packing tape helps get, pick some of it up too. I'm switching to another page on the sheet and now I have the clear stickles, um, I believe it's Stardust. I'll put it in the description. This is the stickles dry glitter that I'm adding. And I'm just putting it on top of it because your green glitter is already adhered and this glitter will only stick um, where the adhesive was showing and it will fill in all those gaps and gives you a beautiful glittery background and you can see your pattern. You could use any type of color combination and any type of glitter. And again I'm just making sure that I have glitter over the entire area where no adhesive is showing and that I've burnished it down a little bit and then I'll shake the excess off. And again that little corner that has too much glitter and not a pattern I covered it up. Here's a card I made with that paper. Here's another card I'm making with um, it's an 
a two size card so it's a smaller piece of um, paper. And I'm just going to make an ombre effect with this one. So I'm just going to pour the white glitter on at the top and go down a little ways. I'm going to make sure I have a lot of coverage at the top and not quite as much in the middle. And I'm just burnishing that and I'll take the excess off in a minute. And moving the excess away from the middle part. If I had worked with this a little better, um, you won't be able to see the line where it meets in a little in a few minutes. Now I'm taking the same green glitter and I'm going to remove the rest of the um, non-stick backing and I'll put green glitter starting at the bottom and going up and my hope is that the glitter will meet and mix in the middle but I should have mixed it a little better but you'll see in a moment. I've left a small area for me to mix some of the um, white and green glitter together and whatever fell on the sheet I'm just using that and this is glitter I've taken off from one of the projects when I put the green glitter down then the white glitter and I still they mixed and combined and I just put it in a little baggie to save for later and I'm using it here in the middle and I'll just rub that in and it will fill in the areas that aren't filled yet and you get a really pretty ombre effect like I said if I had um, taken a little bit more time you won't see the line that you're about to see but it still turned out beautiful so and then you get a type of ombre effect and I used it for this background and tried to disguise the line by putting a, um, another piece across it Here's another card that I end up messing up on, but I wanted you to see so that uh, you could see what I did wrong. I'm wanting to get the rose and the stems, and then I'll do the background in purple. But what ends up happening is the green is not enough contrast. Here I'm just masking off the rose part, and I'll put green glitter where the lips, where the leaves and stems are. And it shows up nicely, but I end up adding purple to the background and there's not enough contrast. So it all kind of blends in together. And I put pink here, which would be nice, but I end up covering it up later. But I wanted you to see this part because that would have been a very nice background had I put white on the background. But because I have the purple adhesive paper and then have these colors on top of it, you see the adhesive, uh, you see the paper shine through some. I'm just removing that stencil. And you can see there where I have the stems and leaves and the rows. And then, oh, I'm sorry, it was another green background, and that's why it all just blended in together. And so, when you're through, you really just see the rose part, and you don't see any of the stems and leaves. So, I end up just covering up the rose and using it. And here I just covered up that rose with a doily and added a flower and I have some push pins. This is a breakdown of what I did to make the stick pins. And here is another card I made um, using the same technique I showed in the beginning. I'm just adding a vellum flower. I have other videos on my channel, which is Janie Lewis, on um, how to make the vellum flowers. and. Um, I'm just placing 
the leaves in also. There's a smaller flower. These particular flowers were made using vellum and the Tim Holtz tattered florals dyes. And I sprayed Lindy Stamp Gang sprays on them to color them. And they curl by themselves when you get the vellum wet. And so it's easy, but it's really pretty, and you get some lovely flowers out of it. I have a video in two parts showing you how to make all of those um, vellum flowers and the leaves. I'll put a, just a link in the description below. And I to kind of take my time seeing where I want the leaves and deciding where I want the flowers. And even though there's such a beautiful glittery background, these flowers are nice enough that they don't distract from the background, but they, they stand out. And I just put a little bit of glue under that ribbon to secure it down. I was trimming the leaves, apparently. And I'm using hot glue here. Um, hot glue's not my favorite glue in the world, but because I'm working on glitter with the vellum, I went ahead and put that. And then I'm just playing around with the effects on the editing program. Here you can see where I've got it all adhered to the card. Be sure and watch the vellum flower videos, and thanks for watching. Bye.